It's so nice to talk to people and to not be wearing riggers or waders. <laughs> Um, I'm Alice Marie. I've been running Bristol Fish Project um, for the past couple of years. I'm a research scientist by training. I got my way through university by working as a waitress, as a chef in catering. I had a small patisserie on St. Nicholas Markets for years. I graduated from my degrees better at catering than at science, certainly. Um, and I'm now embarking on a PhD in geomatics, so I make data-rich maps and I focus on local food. And in my spare time, I have been running this fish farm. Um, it comes from a belief that everybody should have access to good food. However, in my research, I've found that in cities, affluent cities, European cities, that there are people predominantly the elderly, the disabled, low income and otherwise disadvantaged who can actually suffer from nutritional poverty. And that's really exemplified in the recent rise in the use of food banks, which I find absolutely appalling in a developed country. So instead of doing things like food banks, which are amazing, to treat the symptoms and instead of ideas like charity which I still believe in my course should really focus on disaster relief in this context I wanted to find a means to unpick this urban food insecurity and to reconnect communities with good sustainable food if I can have a slide thanks. I set up Bristol Fish Project as an experiment to exemplify and trial what this intervention might look like. It's about community-supported aquaponics. So I've set up and run for the past year the first urban farm to combine hydroponics with aquaponics with a peer-to-peer -peer funding scheme behind it, which means that instead of just selling products and creating the normal food system producers, fertilizer companies, logistics, retailers, consumers. I've blurred the boundaries between producers and consumers. And in my farm, producers are consumers. And the value exchange varies depending on what time you have. But I have people working in well, during the award-winning trial, which has taken nine months, I've had volunteers working on the farm in exchange for food, for community, for learning, people who have real problems accessing good food. I've had a lady coming in regularly who has to feed her kids on £14 a week, and she says that is not enough for her to get them a good, decent diet. I've got retired people who can't actually get themselves the half-an-hour walk to the supermarket. I've put my farm in Knoll in an area which is considered a food desert. It's you know 20 to 30 minutes on foot to get to a shop and then if you're not in best shape it's going to be hard to get yourself your food home again. In all, some 40 volunteers have come through the farm in the nine month trial. They've committed 300 odd hours of fish farming. You wouldn't have thought it would you? They come in, they tend fish, they do some harvesting of plants, they take home some food from the day. It's a trial. I can't say that I've been giving a full exchange of exactly how much they should be earning for their time, but everybody's been getting together around this project. The most interesting thing that happened, actually, in the duration of the trial is every morning I'd come in and something else had been vandalised or broken or somebody had graffiti tossers on the side of the polytunnel again. And... I caught these kids one day in there messing about, checking things around. They were only probably eight, nine, maybe even younger. I don't know why they weren't at school. And they said to me, oh, we saw some boys in here and they stole some stuff. And I was thinking, yeah, you guys stole the stuff. And um, <laughs> so I said to them, well, if you can help me, we can go and find the guys. If you see the guys who stole the stuff, see if you can bring it back for me because it's really important to me. And then I asked them if they wanted to help me for the day and we spent the morning with them planting hydroponic plants looking at fish, feeding the fish and they started to pop up really regularly I'd be in the polytunnel just dabbling in there and these kids would come in they were fantastic 
So I sort of clocked that this might be a really interesting thing to keep kids that are not necessarily into school into something that is educational and teaches them about the world. With funding from SSE and support from Bristol Green Capital Community Challenge Fund, the microelectronics INET, our trial has been covered by local media, national media. We've been on TV in Ukraine about innovative farming. Um, and people have been visiting from as far away as Ghana. And it's embarrassing because on the website we look amazing, but in practice it's a polytunnel on a car park. <laughs> so I always feel like they might be a bit disappointed having come so far. I've realised that people want to learn how to do this. There's lots of people out there that are interested in aquaponics, they're interested in urban agriculture. So I've decided to run a 12-week course. It starts tomorrow. If anybody thinks this is as interesting as I do, just come and talk to me about it later. Um, Bristol is host to innumerable food projects and in a, the corporate context is a dynamic logistical hub for the southwest and has food going out to the whole country from the St Philip's Depot and other places. I would really like to see Bristol as a flagship city for a food system as if people and place and nature actually mattered. And I actually think this is the only city in the UK that could do that. So, you know, we're going to be the EU green capital in 2015. I would really love to see this happen, and I would like my organisation to participate in that. I don't want anything from people more than this to support this idea. And so, yeah, come and talk to me upstairs if you think it's interesting and would like to do it together. Thank you.